Okay, this is my 1994 Case 590 Turbo Backhoe. I bought it at a garage sale about a year and a half ago. This is part two. Part one is when I got it, it was missing a lot of glass, so I'll link that video below. Here in video part two, me and my brother go through a lot of the electronics. That's my brother's expertise. So we troubleshoot the electronics. I'm better at the mechanical stuff. We rebuild both of the steps on both sides. You could see that I painted up some of the stuff more for cosmetics than for any other reason. Rebuilt this step. Fixed up a lot of the interior. More for just making it comfortable to experience using this machine. Found a couple of loose bolts underneath. Enjoy this episode. And maybe there'll be an episode three where I change all the graphics over. But for now, enjoy this video and thank you for watching. Box. What I'm do you think? change all the fuses because we don't have a good starting point with anything. There's no information? Well, there's no electric, you know, so I'm just going to change all the fuses so then I know that I'm starting with a clean slate and if one burns, you know, you go to the next. I got a short. Yeah. So it'll be the quickest way to finding out where a problem is. Good. Uh -huh. So now I'm looking at this thing, it looks like a bird's nest. There's only like, instead of a full fuse box, I'm missing all of the light fuses. You know, let's just see. And then smell that's the fire extinguisher right there. <clears throat> and then, you know, this is a quick disconnect in case this yeah. is. Oh, it was stuck on the light. It was stuck on the light. All right, so the, the, the fan worked. There's electric in the system. Uh, some of the fuses that are missing are some of the fuses where we don't. The areas we don't have I any didn't electric. get that to turn on last summer. What, what did you do different? You just jiggled the switch? Well, a little bit. No, I'm just saying, did you do anything reparatively because yeah, just, I, know, I, I just dabbled with it I just dabbled with it a little bit because I was waiting for a moment like this where I could properly record what to do so basically you shake because it could be dirt these are older switches they could be dirt in the contacts right you know just just even water because I think this had no windows in it at some point yeah I put windows in it I don't know how good the contacts are going to be on that because of the uh I don't know how good the contacts are going to be on that. It looks like it got fried. Does it say what number is going in each one of those? Yeah, I'm putting in the proper amounts. You might have to flip that. Do you hear that? Yeah, yeah. You don't have to flip that over, no. Fucking blinker. Ah! The fucking lights work. The blinker's on. Are you on accessory? Um, All right, that blinker works. Does the other blinker work? No, it's just the same side keeps going. Well, it's funny because now the opposite side over here is blinking, but both lights are on. Jiggle that again. Now they're both. You know what they're blinking? They're blinking like it's uh, emergency blinking. They're not. They're not indicating a left or a right turn. There you go. That just turned off. So nothing. Okay, you got a blinker there. You got a blinker there. This window situation gets another piece of glass, which I haven't been able to find. Maybe you could source that. And then that lower right there, that where the cables come through by your front right foot, I couldn't find that piece of glass. Ah, we got lights. 
light lights. We got two lights in the front. Two of the four light up. There's, there's four lights, just the two center ones are on. Oh, well, one is disconnected on the outside. Of course. We'll check, we'll check now. Look at the other one. Still just the two middles. Let me look at the back. Again. Just the two middles and the red lights are on now. I don't think you got any voltage here. I don't know why, but I don't think you do. I wonder if all external four, all four corners aren't on at the same time. Well, they're never on at this point. All right, FYI, this dome light works. The switch is no good. Okay, good. So that's good. So here's your, you see these things are all done out. See here, you got bite marks through all the wires. You got, that's rodent damage. Up here, can you see? Yeah, rodent. You got a nice hole, somebody trying to eat their way out or in. So I took down the downspouts. I took down the two down posts. This is all unscrewed. The next thing is to pull it down, but I got to be careful because this is going to get showered with rat shit and whatever else. Be careful of what you might get snagged on. That's not so bad. It's, the, it's inside of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One second. There's some skeletons. You want to get a picture of them? Right there are some friends, some former, uh, they used to live here. There you go, there's the little skull. There you go. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. I'll put those in the science museum. I mean, most of the garbage is in the garbage. Turn it. We'll take this it. is the wire for this whole unit? Is that what it was? Is it's the wire for the dome light. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll the put dome it. light's over here. The good thing is, is that it stayed all up there and we can patch it from the inside. Yeah. Look at that. You gotta make a little tiny clear resin end table with that. Good work. So it's good work. I wouldn't have done all this shit. One sec. I, I have two more. Thank you. This should come right down. There's a whole bunch right along the front. Okay. I thought it was a poppin. See it? I got it. I got, I got the whole thing. I got the whole thing. You can lift up. I got the whole thing. I'm holding it for the No, middle. no, no. I'm, I'm doing something. Yeah. Oh, there's a great skeleton wrapped up in that wire. Try not to kill the skeleton. You have a pair of applies on you? I do. I might, re I might replace the run, but right now I'm not doing anything until it's ready. It's the best way to, for me, get it back together. Just don't crush that skeleton. Alright. You! Take so the whole I thing. You. I, I got, got stuff, stuff in the... Uh, no, no, no. I, I'm, well, I'm, what I'm okay. saying is, is that you're loaded on that other side. That was his entrance. So we're going to... I'm going to clean all this off. Honor the dead. You gonna take it out? I'm taking this whole unit out, yeah. Because, so I could get access to my wires up front. Oh, you think that's true? Well, you know. Yeah, all right. We're doing it, I mean, it's... Okay. It's 
Looks I, good. I think it's better. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, that's great. I gotta go get uh, a ratchet set. Some bolts in it. So anything you did, only the two middle lights stayed on. All right, but at least we know this light is good over here. All right, I'm gonna drop this so I. You want to take a look at the? You want to just test the? Because a minute ago you had the two middle back ones on. So go go ahead. Let's go ahead. just check that. One second. Two middles are on. Two okay, middles are on. Two. Your amber blinkers are going now. You're now okay. This is the story. This is for that. Right. And this is for this. Okay. These two. Yeah, one split over. them. Just crimp them, and that'll be that. Right. But there's a reason why they're not working. Right. So, I still just because of what yeah. we got going on, I you still want to look. Drop them. Okay, yeah. that's fine with me. I'm gonna go work. All right. It's good. I didn't expect to get this far, but it's good. These things are on two uh, two spindles, oh, and they're uh, they're stripped. This is no good. The motor's working very good. Oh, you're going to just pull off the arm? We don't need it. Both arms are no good, but I got to see how to take it off. They work. Here's the switch. Right. So the motor works. It's just that that thing. The motor arm, actually works really well. The arms are just screwed up. So it was stripping and spinning inside the thing. It wasn't. That's why it was slowing down. All right, rip yeah. it off. I'll buy a new one. And uh, you think this heater core works? I guess we'd have to run the machine to see, right? We got to run the machine. <laughs> Now that you know all the wiring that works, you're going to switch these out to the good ones. Yep. Right, these are all old, uh, what, what would these be called? Incandescents? Yeah. Yeah, halogen maybe. Halogen. So now we're going to go to LEDs. I got eight of these. Let's see how these look. Yeah, if these look good. What? No, now I got yet, I got to get yet another. Do I have to be back in a second? Where are we at? Okay, so we we dropped the ceiling. We found all of the bad connections. We got the lights in the front and the back working. And replaced. Uh, they put new ones on. Yep, we replaced the front ones because there was a broken one, so we only had one good set. Plus, now they're LEDs. They'll be a little bit better and efficient. They'll be better, much more efficient. Um, and uh, now what we're doing is we cleaned out the air conditioning unit, which was a nest. The front wasn't so bad, but the whole upper area was a nest. So of everything that we've we messed with, what is the is there anything that still doesn't work? I know I know the uh, the gas meter is one thing we're going to try and get. Gas meter we haven't really attempted to do. We just worked on the interior first. Based on uh, everything else, it might just be a cleaning job. It could be a cleaning. Or it just could be it could be hung up. Yeah. It could just be hung up. This thing had no windows in it for ten years, so it might have a lot to do with just being open to the air. Yeah. No, we're going to go ahead. We'll take a look. This if. This is like any other item. It probably has a normal failure, meaning that it's something that, that's happened before. Right. He plays all the characters in the scene. It's fun. All right, let's see. The goal here. We got to take this. This whole thing is all covered with evil. It's covered with oil. It looks like it. Diesel. What the fuck is 
that for? It's a plate for something. Now I can at least get to it. But this is like all filled with like hydraulic fluid. Ooh, this is like straight up filled with hydraulic fluid. Or just weather and moisture. Because this looks like. Those two bolts. Yeah, but I'm just thinking like. And there's nothing there to connect. What I'm was just saying inside? like what was in the. Look at that horrible. Oh, these weld. two bolts. Yeah, but I'm just saying like. And this one pulled out. Yeah. It's just like what did that bolt to? Oh, well, just trying to figure out. We can get the uh, the welder out here. It's not a problem. But then this was the ground wire. This was grounded to this, which is connected through these bolts. So this is your grounding wire. So you think you're losing some amperage or something through that? Some recharging power? Yeah. Yeah. It's not hooked up right. Well, this looks like it went up right on the battery. No, no, no. This was hooked up right to that. Oh, Jesus Christ. So I'm saying it was connected to this piece of yeah, metal, so, which yeah. is right now connected to the frame through that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, so the battery is meant to go on the other side in that box that we just... Ugh. Yeah, they did a nice, shitty job on that. Man, that's heavy. All right, there's the step. Obviously crushed in. We'll unbolt that there and there, and we'll straighten that out. There's that. Let's look at the other step. This whole step was mushed in about 20 minutes ago, but we forgot to roll the camera on it. But we basically did this. <laughs> now, that's it. All right, one more. Do that. Yeah. Very good. Wrong one. Try that one. Oh, that was perfect. Let's try this one. You're going to give birth. Yeah, <laughs> Alright, that's not giving us what we want. Hold on. <laughs> Try that. No, that's not giving us what we need. Maybe right there. Try that. Much better. But not not a hundred percent, but better. What's that? Give us one more. Alright. Uh, try that. Right there. No, oh, that really did good. Let's try this one more time right there. Go. Hit it. Hold on, let me get a better grip on it. Go. That's good. Oh. So this is the original battery box, by the way. Oh, it looks much nicer now. So we got to put the battery box. We got to. Hey, you can get this one. Look at that. In the other, the other direction. So we'll clean this out. Oh, there's no battery and there's nothing in there. Yeah, see, there's your, uh, there's your, there's it. Here's your uh, grounding cable. Yep, there's your real grounding cable. Alright, so right now we're disconnecting. So look at that. Like, what possesses somebody to just make sure it's done completely wrong on purpose? People just don't care. That's a good Alright, we'll clean that out. Hey guys, if you haven't had a chance to check out my Duresta I Make store, I encourage you to click the link in the description of this video. That's where I have created and curated a list of shop items like my skeleton knives, my oversized razor blades, shop posters, and of course there you'll find the handmade ice pick made by me and Rob here in the shop in upstate New York. Some of the items tend to sell out fast, so I do apologize if they are currently out of stock. But if you click the link in the description, you can head over to the shop and check it out. And as always, thank you for the love and support. This is the cover for the hydraulic switch. This is all the hydraulic switch box here. The cover for that is all banged up. We're going to straighten out the step and then reattach it. <clears throat> That's what's here. And then this battery box looks good. Although it looks good, it's been repaired kind of bit of a hack style so I'm gonna cut this off and we're gonna get this bolted on properly I don't want to have to fix this and then find out these wells are gonna break later I didn't do them so we're gonna fix it 
We straighten out the step needs to get straightened out some more. And then we're going to cut this step apart, re-straighten it and weld it back together. So this is what's left of the original mounting bracket. I'm just going to remake it all. And the whole thing was welded over about six inches. This is again, look at the horrible welding somebody did. There's a million starts and stops with a MIG wire right there. Bad grounds, just bad technique. No education. I'm going to grind this all out and we'll come up with some new brackets to keep the box on the frame. Where are the pedals for to swing it left and right? Yeah, they're the hydraulic switches to go left and right. And what's this one? Which one here? The one here. That's to lock the arm up, but uh, it's there's a very specific trick. To, you see how that moves that latch right there? Yep. And you see the receiving pins on the arm? That's to lock it so you could drive with it. So uh, the camera's rolling. We're just looking at the interior. We pulled the rubber mat out and got a lot of debris. Joey pulled the seat off. Pulling out some of the unnecessary interior components. We're going to wash all the mold and mildew out from the cracks. Lots of gravel and crap. Squirrel nests. 
and a lot of rust. I was going to leave that rubber mat in there, but I'm glad I took it out because it's pretty destroyed. Clean it out. So I'm grinding off the mounts, any mounts that had anything to do with the manufacturing are no longer correlate to anything that was on there because they were broken off or cut off or horribly welded back together. So starting from complete, completely from new, cutting off everything that somebody else put on there. This was complete horribly welded bird shit. Just needle scaled the whole floor. Tomorrow we paint it. Okay, this is the step that holds the hydraulics. I cut out the bad repair. This is going to get welded right to the frame. I straighten the step out by banging it apart, cutting it up, taking it apart, and flattening it out. All right, you can see I cut out the old mooring area there. This one is still good, so that's original. And we're gonna be able to line those holes up and then get this in a position and weld it.
Okay, I got this battery box ready to install. You can see here, I cut the steps apart, straightened them on the hydraulic press and welded them back together. I cut off all the brackets that were there from the previous repair done by somebody who does not know how to weld. Got all this bird shit cut off. I have these two pieces of angle iron bolted in here. Now I'll position this, hold it up against the frame and weld it. This is eighth inch, it's a little wimpy, but it's what I have right now. I'll fortify it later if I feel it needs to. But now I have the opportunity to take the battery box off if I need to, if something gets damaged. I don't want to weld it directly to the frame, I want it to be like it was, bolted on so we can unbolt it. Alright, there's the battery box, so now there's that angle iron. I'm going to weld that there and weld that there. So the beauty of doing this is I could bolt everything on the bench bring it out, fit it up against here. I'm using the frame line as my guide and then this pocket where the positive comes through as my guide because it was welded in the wrong place. This whole window was over here. There's no doubt that that window is in this box because it's meant to connect with that. And also there was some evidence of brackets moved over. So we're in the right spot and we're gonna weld this up. Okay, we're welded in here to the frame. And now I'll put the battery in. We got a pause. Got our negative from tractor supply. I think we'll be good. Give it a shot. So this big rubber grommet which keeps the hoses kinked so that they could flex with the arm. This was broken off right there. You can see how it was broken off right there. So I re-drilled it, reattached it, and I'm going to use a piece of this to try to recreate what this going on right here. Try and clamp that on there with a hose clamp so that when you open and close the arm, the loop stays up in the air. And I just wiped off, we got a little bit of a leak, I think, at this fitting. Very, very little leak over time it drips. And then this is degreaser. This is all degreaser I just wiped on there. Let me see if I can't get this sorted out. I'm going to use this to wrap around. So this is temporary. This is a big chunk of that rubber. I have it overlapped over, pipe clamped in, and this keeps these hoses poking up so that when you open and close the arm they stay in the right position. They're so used to being relaxed and laid over because it's been that way for so many years. This is going to help a little bit now that this is connected again.
And of course the other one's nowhere near the hole. You got the nuts? Just put the nut on this, it doesn't... Alright, floor is painted, get all the rust out. Actually, it took six gallons of transmission fluid. Got new coverings on the seat for what it's worth. So I'm under the backhoe, there's lots of drips. Not a whole, whole lot, but could be one source creating all the drips. So we're going to wash it off and see if I can't figure out where it is. But first I'm going to start with just simply seeing if any of these bolts are loose. Because there's a lot of drips right here underneath the transfer case and the rear transaxle here. You might just have a loose bolt or two that's allowing stuff to seep out right here. There's no paint along that seam, which leads me to believe that it's just been deteriorating out of this seam. So I'm going to just try and crank on some of these bolts, torque them down, see if that helps. It's very wet over here. Got some degreaser. This is, I've been collecting a little bit of this just to make sure that it's transmission fluid or hydraulic fluid or maybe even diesel fuel. Who knows? Uh, you can leave it right there. Did it ring? Uh, yeah. Well, you got a message, but... Uh, bring it over here. Just lean it on the tractor. Okay. Oh, look at you. Oh, sh**. That is f***ing loose. Oh, holy shit, that was loose. Yeah, no, I'm talking to the camera. Holy sh that was loose. That was loose by like a half of a turn. Oh, damn. That didn't move. I can't believe it. That one moved. That's where most of the drips are coming from, right here where the paint is done. Wow. All right, so what you're looking at here, this is the hydraulic reservoir. It's made up of parts of the frame, like this whole thing is a reservoir, but it's also part of the structure, this whole frame. And here's a witness window, and you can see the bubbles halfway. The problem that I was having was everything is so sweaty and wet down there, I couldn't figure out, I overfilled it. I thought I was looking at a witness mark in there. It was not, it was dirt. Now I've emptied out over three gallons of too much hydraulic fluid. So I don't think I'm going to get this sweatiness anymore because it was blowing out of the cap and going everywhere. So I think I might have corrected what I thought was a leak. We'll clean it off and find out. You can actually see the bubble in there now. What I was looking at before was just dirt. So there's the bubble. There's the level of the hydraulic. The fluid needs to come and go from the reservoir. I had it filled all the way up to here, which was a big mistake.
So these, I'm kind of tempted to weld them everywhere, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to put these two here. I put one on each end. And then this was the hook that was bent up here. That was the one I just cut off, flattened it out in the blacksmith shop. And I welded it here for just one good hook in the middle for straps and whatnot. And these will be for chains. These original hooks were for throwover forks. But if I need to put forks on here, I could put clip-on forks that go on the end there. So I don't necessarily need the four hooks for the throwover forks. And if I ever did need them, I'll just cut all this off and plasma cut a few of those and get myself back in shape. But right now I'm just going for some utility and some cosmetics. But I'm only going to just use two of these for now. If in my course of daily use I realize I need more, I'll just weld them wherever I need them. did about three passes on each side. I did a root pass and then two on top. Same on the other side. And same here, root pass and then a second pass on each side. So we should be good. And then I will not make sure I dance underneath anything I'm carrying. I'm not trying to make this thing like absolutely perfect. But it does clean it up a little bit when you paint it. And I could not find the correct case color paint. So this is JD Yellow with some brown rust preventative Rust-Oleum poured into it. So it's just one tractor paint turned a little bit more brown to vaguely match what's going on here on this tractor. Considering it's been out in the sun since 1993, it's going to be impossible. But this is really just to kind of spruce it up for the beauty shots. It looks great on the ground. Doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Thanks, Derek from Walden. Thank you. I know it's not important to the overall mechanics of the machine, but just having them painted, painted in there, I mean, prevented some rust that was accumulating in there <clears throat> to slow it down. It just gives a certain sense of pride to the machine that it didn't have before. Like I said, it's, it doesn't have much to do with the mechanical of it, but just seeing it painted, Makes you want to check the oil, makes you want to make sure it has enough gas in it, and makes you want to check the grease fittings. It's almost like the broken window theory. It's like when the whole machine looks like this, you just start to unintentionally stop caring. When it starts to look like this, you go, oh, look at that cool new machine I have. And uh, the jury's out. Maybe video three, I'll cut all this off. I'm just not sure. It's, it's Right now, it's, it's too much to cut all the logos off. Thank you for watching.